My name is Sienna Bangura and I'm a writer, blogger and journalist and I am the founder of Black British feminist platform No Fly On The Wall. No Fly On The Wall was founded in July 2013, soon after I graduated from university. I speak about this a lot because essentially the incentive came from feeling extremely invisible, extremely lost um, and just kind of having this sense of you know, I need to say something, but I don't know how, and there's not a platform for me to use to say it anyway. That sense of needing to be fulfilled and needing to make a difference was far too strong to ignore. It's so a long story short, I just thought, what am I good at? What are my skills? And I decided my skills are, you know, being a good writer, a good communicator, and being good at getting people motivated to do things. And so I reached out to some of my closest friends, told them my idea, and we got to work really, and I founded No Fly on the Wall, the blog itself, and I always knew I didn't want it just to be an online space. At the time, I didn't know how I would make it more than that, but I always said it was going to be a movement, a community. Um, and just kind of over the years, really, we've managed to take up physical space here in Bethnal Green and put on monthly events through our No Fly on the Wall Academy. We've been encouraging marginalised people, black women, to take up physical space, to take up space online as well, to feel empowered. And I've seen how that is making a difference. I've seen that people are making genuine relationships, they're making genuine friendships, they're actually networking and using people in their network. They're not afraid of other black women. People will come to our events on their own and, and make friends. And I think that's been really powerful for me to see. And I think it just keeps on reminding me that this work needs to be done and black women need to gather together and start to discuss their pain and their vulnerability and their difficulties at work or they need to come together and talk about their family structure, or they need to talk about whether or not they want to vote for a certain party, or they need to come together and talk about their body image and the politics of beauty. I know these things are true because I'm a black woman and I too find that I need to have spaces in which to discuss those things. My mum is my biggest influence. My mum has completely shaped who I am. I think just from seeing how she has carried herself and how she's raised myself, my brother and my sister and how she's kind of navigated an extremely hostile world, a hostile community, hostile British soil. I think that's something that, you know, I've, I've watched over the years and definitely taken note of and she's definitely key in why I'm so passionate about black women, about the plight of black women. She's very key in why I want to do anything that I can and my, anything in my power to to make sure that the status quo is changed and that black women feel empowered and that black women are able to speak out because I was raised always be encouraged to speak out and be myself and take up space and I'm just kind of trying to translate those lessons and, and you know impart them to, to other people who may not be as fortunate shall we say as need to have someone in their life always building up their self-esteem regardless of what she's going through but always building up my self-esteem and encouraging me and saying you can do whatever you want to do and I think I just want to keep on doing that work um, for black women and, and that's all rooted from the fact that my mum is my biggest inspiration. A really really hard lesson has been um, understanding that a lot of my oppression, my difficulties, my challenges are closely, not exclusively, but closely linked to the fact that I am black and woman and that is an extremely painful pill to swallow because I can't change that I'm black, I can't change that I'm a woman. I cannot change that I'm a black woman. Not that I would want to change that. Or that there have been times back in, in the past when I was still finding myself that I definitely felt that strong sense of, man, if I could just change, things would be easier. Society is set up to see you fall um, and it's set up um, to see some of your friends win because they're white or because they're men. I think it's painful to understand that some of the things your str the struggles your mum has, has had is because she's a black woman. Um, I think it's painful to understand that some of the struggles your sister will have is because she's a black woman. So um, that understanding with it came a massive burden, absolutely. So that was definitely a difficult lesson to learn. But once you come to learn it, accept it, understand it, you can start to, to work through it and, and ask yourself, what am I going to do to change this? What am I going to do to challenge this? And you hate all those with skin like yours. Just in case they remind your white friends that you too are from a bottomless hole and you too are black. 
and black holes make craters in your moons, and your moons make craters in black holes. Dark sides of the galaxies and even darker sides of every story, and your goal in life is to marry into white so that you can at least dilute the nights that you were born with and born into, so that your children too do not feel the need to set themselves alight and scorch the earth of their caramel skin, burning everything inside and everything inside. And on some days you conclude that you want to die because your black is defiant and your black is resilient and your black is strong too strong to simply wash away. And your black is powerful. And your black is beautiful. And your black is the beginning and not the end. And your black will rise from its ashes day after day and time after time and night after night and love after hate and hate after fear. Fear of the unknown black holes that swallow Earth. And you buy 10 more bottles to set yourself straight to mend your broken and to fix your self-hate, to turn your darkness into light. Thank you. People like to get me to perform and, and say what I want to say, but I always wonder when people leave the room, are they gonna, what are they going to do about their privilege? What are they going to do to check their privilege? What are they going to do to make a difference of what I've said. How are we gonna create meaningful change together? And I think that's an ongoing challenge that I have, an ongoing struggle, because I think it's very important to talk, and I always say that, but I think, for me, I'm trying to be solution-focused, and I'm trying to make the people who say that they are allies, and the people who have the power, um, I'm trying to get them to do something, right? When we're talking about lived experiences, what we're saying needs to be taken seriously to the point of meaningful change, not just to make yourself feel good that you spent some time one evening at an event listening to a poet. I think an ongoing battle is the, is the biggest thing. You've got to do something with what you learn and what you unlearn. Unlearning is the process of, I suppose, rejecting everything that you've been taught by society, by your family, by school, by any system, any institution. It's about rigorously challenging certain definitions. The dictionary definition of racism is wrong, for starters. It was written by white men, um, therefore it's wrong. Same as ideas of sexism. These things aren't just about the words you use or not treating people a certain way. It's deeper than that. It's more, it's, it's darker than that. It's more insidious than that. Um, these things are usually related to structures and power structures and systems. Those are things that you don't get necessarily taught at school, to be honest. And even then, the things you do get taught at school, I have found that I've had to find a separate education entirely outside of the classroom. And that's probably been my most important education. So although I didn't coin the term unlearning, but it is something that has been strongly attached to the work I do and what I do and what I advocate. And you know, I am not perfect in any way sense, in any sense of the word at all, in any way or shape. Um, and I'm always unlearning, but I think I'm extremely willing to unlearn and, and open to, to knowing that I'm wrong and I, I need to, to be called out in order to be called in and stuff like that. And I think a lot of people still have that work to do because it's not easy, of course it's not easy. And at No Fly on the Wall, we always advocate the process of unlearning and doing it together in a room face to face because for starters, everyone's accountable to one another. Um, I think it's great to speak online. I think Black Twitter especially has been very vital in bringing certain things to the fore and having certain conversations. But I think there's only so much you can do online and only so much you can say in 140 characters without losing Things for like tone, things like sense, you know? Um, I think it's important to be in the flesh. There's nothing, you can't, there's nothing better than talking to people face to face and, and creating a safe space where they can be completely honest with you and be held accountable for what they're saying as well and have room to be called out so as to be called in, room to be educated, room to educate other people. Um, I think that unlearning process, part of it, a vital part of it is getting together and, and just, you know, musing with your brothers and sisters, musing with your community, musing. Sometimes you don't find answers, but that's okay. Collaboration is absolutely vital for anybody. Um, it's funny because we actually don't get taught that collaboration is a good thing. Often it's competition, competition, competition in the corporate world, um, in the creative space, anywhere. It's about competition, being better than the next person, being better than the next man, better than the next, than the next woman, and so on and so forth. And I think what I've learned is that particularly when you're an activist, or when you're a creative, when you're an artivist, someone who's trying to make a meaningful change, and someone who 
is clapping back at the very people who would be giving you your money, the very people who would be giving you opportunities, the very people who run society. Obviously, you put limitations on yourself to some extent. Um, there are people who won't want to work with you because they think you're too vocal, you're too outspoken, you're not able to be controlled. Um, I've had this. Um, said many times, um, but I think I've accepted that and that's why I'm out here trying to forge my own identity, carve up my own space and to do that often you have very limited resources, often you have no resources, often you have to be a wizard and create things out of literally nothing um, and the only way that you, that is sustainable is if you're working with other people. And I think often too many of us are wanting to reinvent the wheel we're wanting to create the same thing that already exists because we want our own thing. Nothing wrong with wanting your own thing. But I always say, if, if there's something that already exists, maybe help that person join the team, make it your own, invest in that so it's something that you all collectively own. Because resources are limited. They are so limited, only getting more limited. Money is like non-existent for people who are out here doing meaningful, meaningful work. Um, space is limited. Time is limited, so you want to share the load. In society, we're always searching for the next best thing, or we're always searching for the next thing, the next win, the next success, the next thing to tick off our list, right? And so you can be completely consumed by it and devoured by it until there's nothing left. And I think it's important to start with understanding that you are enough as you are, and there are things that you need to do with your life, and they're personal to you. So you have to be comfortable in your own skin, which is a lifelong work. Definitely, I don't have all the answers, but if you start to at least work on yourself first and understand that you are enough and what you're trying to do is enough, your talents are enough and what you want to do in life is enough, um, then I think everything else should fall into place. Society, by default, in its current state exists to break black women and the very fact that we are defiant and not completely broken is honourable and amazing. Um, the very fact that we survive and thrive regardless is amazing and I think that comes with starting to understand that you are enough and that your sisters are enough and that we are sisters we shouldn't be competing with each other we shouldn't be fighting with each other we are fundamentally kind of living very similar lives it's my good side so we've been I hope really looking at <laughs>